In this video, we get started with Azure Automation again. Hello everyone, I'm Travis and this is Heraldos. Back in April of 2018, I did my first video on Azure Automation. I was so much younger back then, and what was I thinking with that background? Anyway, a lot has changed with Azure Automation, and it's time to revisit this wonderful Azure service. In this video, we get started again with the basics of creating an automation account and a runbook. Before that, please don't forget to like and subscribe and share with a friend on your social media platform of choice. Become a member for early access to videos, add free will private, and check out my courses on Azure Virtual Desktop and hybrid identities with Windows AD and Azure AD. The links are below. Back to it, let's start with what Azure Automation is. Have you ever used Task Scheduler to run PowerShell scripts? It's like that only on steroids, and it's not limited to PowerShell. There are other useful features included with Azure Automation. Process Automation provides a way to automate tasks with PowerShell, PowerShell Workflow, or Python. These tasks can be triggered by schedules or events and can run in Azure or on-premises. Configuration Manager provides change tracking and inventory, a way to watch for changes on Windows and Linux virtual machines. There's also a version of desired state configuration hosted in Azure, providing a way to apply configurations to VMs automatically. Update management allows us to manage updates on Windows and Linux systems in Azure or other cloud providers and on-premises. It shares resources across Azure automation, such as schedules, PowerShell modules, Python packages, credentials, and variables. Before we go any further, I'd like to point out two other similar services to Azure Automation. Azure Functions is an event-driven serverless automation tool. In addition to Python and PowerShell, it supports other languages, including c -sharp, Java, and JavaScript. It leverages an Azure app service and can be triggered by web-based calls. Think of it as a way to build a service that accepts an input and returns an output. It can be used for automation, but it is different from Azure Automation in the languages it supports, how it's triggered, and the way we develop the code it runs. Matter of fact, I moved the first version of an Azure Virtual Desktop Autoscale solution to Azure Functions because the minimum reoccurrence for Azure Automation is one hour. An Azure Function can be ran every hour, minute, or down to seconds. Let's move on to Azure Logic Apps. This is a close cousin to Azure Automation. Logic Apps uses a graphical user interface to build workflows for process automation. There are over 450 connectors providing integration points with other Microsoft and third-party services. It's like Power Apps, but built based on consumption, not license per user. Both Azure Functions and Logic Apps are similar in functionality with Azure Automation, but support different use cases. In the upcoming demo, we're going to create an Azure Automation account and deploy a simple PowerShell runbook. Before that, there's one big change from my first video in 2018 that we need to talk about. Previously, if the automation job interacted with Azure resources, we had to use a run as account. This was an account bound to Azure Automation that provided access to Azure resources with our back roles. Run as accounts had a problem. They're based on a certificate created when the automation account is set up and expire in one year. If the certificate isn't renewed, the account and automation jobs that use the account would stop working. Now, Azure Automation has a recommended option of creating a system assigned or user assigned managed identity. A system assigned managed identity is created with the automation account and will be removed when that automation account is removed. It's bound to the lifecycle of the automation account. A user assigned managed identity is created beforehand and we can associate it with an automation account, but it's not bound to the lifecycle of the account. For example, if we had an automation account that interacted with multiple resources, SQL and app services, for example, we could use a system assigned managed identity to access those resources. But if we had multiple Azure resources, say an Azure automation account and an Azure function app that both interacted with the same resources, we could use a user assigned managed identity, setting rights to the resources once and leveraging the same managed identity to provide access to multiple resources an Azure SQL and an Azure app service for this example. With that, let's get started by setting up an automation account in the Azure portal and then publish a runbook. Here we are in the Azure portal. Let's go to create a resource to create an automation account. Search for automation. We'll go to automation and we'll create a new automation account. 
Make sure your subscription is selected and create a new resource group. For this example, I'll use automation RG01. Give the automation account a name, automation account 01 for this example. Select your region. I'll select Central US. Let's click Next to Advanced. Here's where we can create a system assigned or user assigned managed identity. Run as accounts is not an option anymore. If we select User Assigned, for User Assigned, we have to add a pre created user assigned managed identity. As I stated at the beginning of this video, that's used when we want to assign permissions to one managed identity and use that across multiple automation accounts or other services. Azure Functions can use managed identities, for example. We'll use the system assigned managed identity for this example. That's bound to the life cycle of this automation account. Once we remove the account, the identity is removed with it. Let's go to Next. We'll leave the networking set to public access for now. Go to Next. Add tags as needed and go to Review and Create. Click Create once validation passes to finish. It just takes a few seconds to finish. Before we go to the resource, let's go to Azure Active Directory and review the system assigned managed identity. From Azure AD, go to Enterprise Applications. Change the application type to Managed Identity. And apply. Here's a list of all the managed identities and we can see our automation account. Let's open that. Overview shows a list of account details. Let's go to Roles and Administrators. We can see the RBAC roles from this view that are assigned to the account by default. We can give the account RBAC roles to other resources just like a user. That will provide the Azure Automation account rights to interact with Azure resources. The default roles are all at the Azure AD scope. If we want the managed identity to interact with resources in the subscription, we need to give it rights to that resource. For the example coming up, we're just going to pull information about the Azure Automation account. So the managed identity will need at minimum read access to the account. To add a role to the managed identity, we'll go to the resource group for the Azure Automation account we just set up. We'll go to resource groups. We'll go into Automation RG01. That's the resource group with our automation account. Next, we'll go to Access Control IAM. Add a role assignment. Select Reader. That will give the managed identity read access to objects in this resource group. We'll go to Next to Members. Select a member. Search for the system assigned managed identity. It'll have the same name as the automation account. We'll select that. Go to Next and Review and Create. Now we're ready to create our first runbook. Let's go back to the Azure Automation account. We'll open the account we created. This account is new, so we don't have any job history yet. On the left, we can see the features in the automation account, including configuration management, update management, process automation, and shared resources. Also, let's go into modules under shared resources. This is a list of all the modules that are available for our PowerShell runbooks. We have the option to add new modules, update the AZ modules, and browse the PowerShell gallery. We can search and filter to verify the modules our runbooks need are available. Let's change the filter runtime version to 7.1. It looks like we have all the 7.1 AZ modules available. Next, we'll create a simple runbook that will use one of the AZ modules. Let's go back to process automation, runbooks. There are a couple example runbooks available. Let's create a new one. We'll call it Simple Runbook. For runbook type, select PowerShell. Notice the other options for Python, PowerShell Workflow, 
and the options for graphical PowerShell runbooks. We'll select PowerShell, select the runtime version 7.1, and do note that support for 7.1 is in preview. Once ready, click Create. This is the runbook web editor. We'll use this for now. Let's verify the PowerShell version by calling the PS version table variable. We'll add dollar sign PS version table, click save, and then go to the test pane. This is where we can test the code. We can test it by clicking start. That submits the job into the queue. It'll take a minute to run. Here it shows the PowerShell version and the OS along with other details. We can close the test pane. Next, I want to get some details from Azure. Let's run the command get az automation account to view details about this automation account. We're passing in the resource group name and the automation account name. Let's save this and go to the test pane. And we'll start the test. We'll give it a minute to finish. That doesn't look good. What happened? Well, we have a managed identity, but we did not authenticate to Azure AD with that identity. Just like you need to log in to interact with Azure, the runbook has to log in with the managed identity. Let's do that next. We'll close the test pane. Before we can run the get AZ automation account command, we have to run a series of commands to log in. The first command disables context inheritance. That's more important if we have parent-child runbooks, but it's good to get in the habit of adding. Next, we sign in with the managed identity with the connect AZ account command and assign the context to a variable. After that, we set the context. I'll include a link to these commands below. Let's save and test the runbook again. We'll go to the test pane and start the job. We'll give it a minute to finish. That looks better. Now we get the details of the Azure Automation account. Remember, the runbook can only pull this information because we gave the managed identity read permissions to the Azure Automation Resource Group. Now that we've tested it and it all looks good, let's publish it. We can close the test pane. We can publish the runbook with the publish icon on the screen. Click yes to proceed. Notice there are no jobs found. Also, if we go back to the overview of our automation account, no job show. The tests that we run don't count as jobs. Let's go back to our runbook. We'll open the runbook we created and start to run the job. We can watch the status as it runs. That finished. Now that it's done, we can see inputs, outputs, errors, warnings, all logs, and exceptions. Here's the output for the command. Now if we go back to the automation account, overview, it shows one job ran successfully. That's how we create an Azure automation account, a managed identity, and test and publish a runbook. That is how to set up an Azure automation account with a system assigned managed identity and run a simple runbook. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and thanks for watching.